Pretty good, pretty good. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I just want to ask you, has there been anyone that you've kind of leaned on throughout this process, whether it be uh, former players, former teammates that have gone through the whole uh, pro day pre-draft process? Uh, no, honestly, I felt like I led more on, like, the guys I trained with because, honestly, we just built a great bond uh, around with everyone. Uh, I feel like a lot of people did a great job in their pro days, and I'm proud of them. Have you had any communications with the Buccaneers in the pre-draft process yet? Buccaneers? Uh, I believe so, but I honestly don't remember. I have a lot of Zoom calls that I've been doing and attending, so it's a fun process. We'll see what happens. Absolutely. Best of luck on your journey. Appreciate it. Okay, next up, we're going to have, uh, sorry if I pronounced this wrong, Matthias. No problem, no problem. Uh, Amilcar, here is Matheus Ornelas from Time Out here in Brazil. Uh, congratulations for going for the NFL draft. Uh, you have the Pro Day, you have the Senior Bowl. There are like one of the few chances to talk with the NFL scouts because of the pandemic and all the problems that you have. What do you most hear with, with the scouts that you, about your qualities, stuff you have to improve? Uh, honestly, uh, I feel like a lot of people told me they liked how I play and uh, I'm just, I feel like a lot of people told me I can uh, improve on like, you know, waste movement. I feel like a lot of people approved on, uh, talk to me about that. You know, I feel like I let a lot of people block me when, you know, I could have definitely not did that. But um, honestly, I feel like a lot of people just, you know, um, being cordial to me, you know, they're um, just telling me I'm a good player, you know, and uh, just a lot of questions was just seeing uh, the drop of, you know, production, of course, but everything else, I feel like they know what type of player I am and I'm the best player in this draft. Thank you. Good luck. Okay, next up, Andrew Hobner. Hey, I'm Andrew Hobner from uh, KZI down in Eugene. I know at the end of last season, you had talked about how difficult this year was for you um, battling through injuries and just dealing with the COVID season in general. Just curious where you're at health wise, uh, what you've been working on on that end in the off season and just kind of how you've been throughout this process. Oh, I would say this process is definitely, it's a fun process. You know, uh, obviously we haven't had the full experience because, you know, NFL combine has been canceled and, you know, uh, the senior bowlers has been like limited and stuff we could do. But honestly, I feel like uh, I still have a great experience. You know, I have plenty of Zoom calls and stuff like that with teams, meeting with them, you know, doing a lot of uh, fun things. I feel like the process obviously could have been better, you know. It's limitations with this COVID season. But I feel like overall I'm doing great. My body's great, you know. And I feel like I did a lot of good stuff in this uh, pro day. So we'll see what happens. Just as a quick follow-up to that, do you feel like you're back to 100% health-wise? Uh, we could say that. We could say 95, you know, I can always get better, you know, always recover and stuff like that. Obviously, no one's 100 percent definitely in this uh, process. You know, it's always a nick and knack somewhere around there, you know. OK, next, we're going to uh, go to Alex Cazorro. Cazorro, sorry. That's all right. Appreciate you talking with us. I want to ask about you as a pass rusher. What are your favorite pass rush moves and what do you think is more important for a pass rusher to have one or two go to moves or to have a lot of tools in the tool belt? Honestly, I feel like if they can't stop it, you know, it's just can continue to use it until they can stop it. I feel like, you know, for example, you know, Ron Miller, he has his band and nobody could beat his band. And I feel like, you know, I, I, I have this the same ability. I have the best band in this in this uh, draft process. And I feel like I'm a lead banner and I'm a lead pass rusher. And I feel like I'm the best pass rusher in this draft. Um, but other than that, I feel like uh, for a pass rush, you obviously have to have multiple moves because obviously people game plan against you and stuff like that. If you have more stuff in there, I feel like more, more, the more that's in the toolbox, the more you know you have to work with. Okay, next uh, we're gonna go Kyle Odegaard. Hey, I'm Kyle, I'm Kyle with uh, AZCardinals.com, and I was wondering, growing up, if you were a fan of the Cardinals at all, and seeing JJ Watt and Chandler Jones. What have you studied those type of guys on tape? Is it is it interesting to see that they're with the Cardinals at this point? Oh, honestly, I feel like, you know, I always thought about, you know, going to the Cardinals. That would be a fun thing because obviously I see a lot of Arizona people going to the Cardinals and they're drafting them and they're, and they're there and they're doing great. I feel like, you know, Christian Kirk, obviously, and Brian Murphy, you know, those are two guys that are from Arizona and they're on Arizona Cardinals. I feel like they're great fits and they're doing great there. But uh, other than that, you know, uh, just seeing uh, J.J. Watt, 
and you know uh, Chandler Jones I feel like that's a that's a great duo right there you know they're two unstoppable forces we got an MVP and you know I feel like Chandler Jones is also MVP the way he plays and the way he bends and the way he just aggressive motor around the ball I feel like he's a great guy you know obviously I would love to learn from him and stuff like that so we'll see what happens but okay next uh Nick Dashel yeah um Hamica, because you guys have so few opportunities to show what what you're doing this spring you know this maybe the senior bowl did this feel like you're maybe preparing for a game and did um, were the nerves there like like a game are you talking about this uh combine yeah today yeah today work do, doing the, the pro day today i mean did it pro day that's a feel like you were prepping for a game or no, honestly, I feel like uh, all the work we did, we know what we're, we're preparing for. I feel like you could say that it's like preparing for a game. Obviously, the drilling and stuff like that is pumping. You're trying to show what you got. You're trying to show how good you are in front of, you know, 30, 40, 50 scouts there. So I feel like you could say it's prepared for a game. You know, we all have game plans. We have, like, routines that we have to do five days, six days out, getting ready for the game. I feel like you could say, yeah, for sure, it's a game plan for you, like being in the game, for sure. Back to Matthias. Thank you. Uh, uh, Amukar, Matthias from Time Out Brazil again. Uh, you, you, you got asked about J.J. Watt, Chandler Jones, and the guys on the Arizona Cardinals. But what what the kind of type of players that you like to watch to, to see the tape and maybe try to copy one or two things or just the quick, quick details that you can use to improve your game? Honestly, I feel like just watching any elite pass rusher or any crazy outside linebacker anywhere around there, I feel like you can't stay wrong from that. I feel like, you know, there's plenty of them out there. You know, there's Miles Gary, he's a DN. He's out there wrecking havoc 90% of the time. And I feel like, you know, you got TJ Watt and, you know, Aaron Donald. There's plenty of people that you could watch and try to imitate, you know, try to uh, adapt and try to see what, they, what works for them and try to see if that works for you. But I feel like, you know, just uh, knowing what you got in, the, in in your pocket, I feel like that's the biggest one for me. I know what I bring to the table and I know uh, what I can do. So I feel like the biggest thing is for me is mastering what I can do and learning from them. Thank you. Good luck. Appreciate okay, it. next up, Angie Machado. Hello, Angie. There I am. Sorry. Um, hey, Ham. Couple questions for you. I, I don't know if you know your times or your numbers yet, but what did you feel that you did the best on? And also how good did it feel to be back in Corvallis? <laughs> uh, honestly, I feel like, you know, I did all right. I feel like I could always do better. You know, that's the type of mindset I have. I feel like, you know, even if I did great, I don't know what I got. I feel like I could always do better. That's what the chip on my shoulder is. I always want to do better. And I always want to be, you know, the big type guy that always has outstanding numbers and stuff like that. I just have a, you know, some people say I'm hard on myself, but who I got to be my biggest critique, you know? So I feel like, um, for me, I feel like I did great, but you know, I can always be better. Okay, next up, Kyle Odegaard. Pam, you mentioned the, the teams asking about the production drop. Was it frustrating having such big numbers two years ago to, to not having the sack totals this season? Uh, honestly, you know, you could say that, but at the same time, I know what type of player I am. I know what I bring to the table. So, you know, if everybody wants to like get into stats and stuff like that, there's no difference to me, you know, going next year and getting 10, 15 sacks, you know, there's no difference from one year to the next. I feel like I'm still the best pass rusher in here. I got a lead band, you know, all that stuff is not going to stop from one year to the next. I feel like I'm still going to be the best guy out there. And if you pick me, you'll see what you get. Okay, we're looking at the last question for him, uh, Alex Kazora. I know you're talking about yourself as a pass rusher. I'm just curious, how much, if any, did you drop in the coverage? And are you comfortable going backwards as well? Oh, I, I would say I'm not just a pass rusher. You know, I kept saying that, but obviously, I feel like I'm the all-around athlete. I feel like, you know, I could do it all. You want me a pass rush? You want me to do one-on-ones? You want me to uh, smack this uh, tight end, right receiver, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. That's the thing about me. I did that this year. I feel like, you know, Obviously, I didn't get a lot of pass rushes, and I'm not complaining about that. So, but overall, I feel like you know I could do it all. Whether you want me to do, I'll do it. Teach me how to do it. I'm gonna do it. Okay, Ham. Thank you for your time. Thank you. 
All right, everyone. Next up, we have Jamar Jefferson. Uh, again, please uh, raise your hand, and I'll call on you. And we're going to start with Andrew Hobner. Andrew, go right ahead. Hey, Jamar. Uh, Andrew from KZI down in Eugene. Um, after the year that you had this season and the production you were able to put together, I'm just curious what the conversations have been from scouts and what they've liked about your team and where, where they say you may fit in um, and what your role might be at the next level. Um, I say since my freshman year, I got a lot better at pass protection. So, you know, every scout I talk to, they always say I improved in my pass protection and um, pass protection identification. Uh, one thing they said they want to see more uh, during this past season was, you know, start catching the ball out of the back uh, backfield. But I displayed that today. Just to follow up on that real quick, um, you know, you've you've picked up some nicks over the last couple of years, you know, just season to season that happens. Um, have there been any questions about just durability and, and staying healthy for a full year? I mean, no, not at all. Uh, freshman year, uh, I, I missed one game. I said missed one game because of mild hamstring strain. And last year, uh, 2019 year, I said that's the only year that was a big injury for me that that really, you know, took me out of a couple of games. So. Uh, so I'll just say one injury really that was really big uh, throughout my year. Okay, next up we have Joshua Allen. Hey, how are we doing today? Yeah, how you doing? I'm doing well. I just wanted to ask you, uh, has there been anyone that you've kind of leaned on? Can you repeat it? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Whether it be former teammate. Can you hear me? No, nah, it's kind of going in and out. Can, can, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. I said, has there been anyone that you've kind of leaned on throughout this process uh, for tips on like the pre-draft and, and pro day that you picked their brain a little bit? Uh, any, um, I mean, I've been talking to my, my max running back coach, Michael Petrie, a lot. He's been helping me a lot. And some of the staff here have been helping me a lot with uh, interviews and things like that. And then the training, uh, the facility I was working at was Sports Academy. So uh, a lot of those guys, you know, I've leaned on and they taught me a lot of things. Have you had any communications with the Buccaneers in the pre-draft process yet? Uh, yes, I have talked to them. Uh, I think about this was around two weeks ago. So I talked to, to the Buccaneers. Awesome. Thank you. Best of luck on your journey. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, next up, Nick Farabaugh. Hey, Jamar, Nick Farabaugh, Pittsburgh Sports Now. Um, my One of my things that I've noticed on your tape is you are very comfortable as a one-cut guy in a wide zone scheme. Is that something you just feel more comfortable with? Is that something you've really – focused on developing uh, and, and how comfortable do you feel, you know, when you are asked to run in between the tackles and process in a different manner than you are in a wide zone scheme, when you have more one cut opportunities, when you might have more two cut or even three cut opportunities in between the tackles. Uh, that's funny. Cause I say my freshman year, freshman and sophomore year, uh, our team, we ran a lot of inside zone and gap scheme plays and um, really just 2020 this past year, we decided we was going to be like a wide zone team. So it's going to be wide zone, wide zone, wide zone. And um, that's something I had I had trouble with throughout my freshman and sophomore year. Like I just couldn't, it just didn't click to me, uh, wide zone. So, you know, I got with my coach, Coach Peach. We spent a lot of time watching film this past year on wide zone and where the hole was going to hit and how it uh, developed. So, you know, I spent a lot of time uh, this past year. I think uh, Y zone became one of my favorite runs. But, you know, I can I can do inside zone and gap scheme plays and um, catch the ball out of the backfield, too. So uh, any meetings with the Steelers? And if so, how have those conversations went? You see any? Oh, yeah. Um, I had a meeting with the, uh, the Steelers. Um, I say uh, this was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I went fine. You know, I did great on my interviews. He tested me on fronts and coverages and things like that now yeah he said I did good all right who did you meet with specifically you don't have to answer that if you don't want to yeah I, I, don't, I don't remember it's I don't remember it's been a lot of coaches I've talked <laughs> to I mean, totally understand it man good luck thank you thank you okay next up we're gonna have uh, Mateus uh Jamar Mateus Arnales from timeout here in Brazil uh congratulations for your pro day and going for the NFL draft um uh, in 2020, you only have two two chances of uh, being a special team as a as a returner. Th that skill is something that the the NFL scouts are trying to talk to you. You've been working on it. Uh, yeah, I have been working on special teams. You know, this past year I was at kickoff return. I was the deep man for about I think uh, two games. I had two returns. 
Uh, but other than that, I haven't played any other special teams. But, you know, every time it was a special team meeting, I knew that I wasn't on, going to be on special teams, but I was still in the meetings, you know, learning and, and taking down notes because I knew that's what I was going to do at the next level. And just a quick, uh, just a quick follow up. Uh, do you say about the teams want to see you catching the ball uh, because you don't have so much that on college? But what do you think is the main quality that any team is going to get it if they pick you? Me, I say my biggest ability is my vision. Uh, I think I see a lot of things uh, other other running backs don't see, to be honest. But uh, so I think the one of, that's one of my best abilities, and you know I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna play hard, and you know. I'm played to the game in, so I got that toughness, mental toughness and physical toughness. Thank you. Good luck. Okay, next up, Alex Kazora. Hey, Alex Kazora, Steelers Depot. Appreciate your talking with us. I want to go back to that, that comment you made earlier about switching from an inside gap scheme, uh, inside zone gap scheme to a, to a wide zone. What was the biggest coaching point that you struggled with? And what would you say is the biggest difference with either your eyes or your footwork going from an inside zone versus outside wide zone? Uh, most of it, uh, outside zone was just, you know, having a, a correct aiming point. I used to mess up my aiming point a lot. I used to take it too wide or too close. Um, so this, this, this past year, I worked on my aiming point a lot. And, uh, I'll say another thing is my eyes too. having my eyes in the right, in the right place and who I'm reading on wide zones. Uh, I struggle with that a little bit, but you know, this past year, uh, me and Petrie met a lot and, uh, we became one of the easiest runs I, I do. What was the what is the aiming point on outside zone? Is that the hip of the tight end, or where where's your aiming point at? But at a butt of the tight end. So that's okay. our, that was that was our aiming point. I was state. Gotcha. Thank you. Hey, David Miller. Uh, hi, Jamal. How are you doing today? Good and you? I'm good, Chase. Uh, just first off, have you spoken with the Eagles? Uh, yeah, I did actually about a couple of days ago. I think. Okay, awesome. And if they were, if the Eagles were to draft you, what would you add to that running back room with the likes of Miles Sanders and Boston Scott? Uh, I think I, you know, I'm a balance back, so I add a little bit of both, some power and some speed. Uh, uh, probably really all around, all around running back, catch the ball, pass, protect. So just a typical three down back uh, that can really kind of do everything. Okay. Next up, we have Kevin Fishbane. Hey, Jamar, I know you've talked about Coach Petra a few times. What, what's kind of the influence he's had on you, and, and how has he been helping you in this process? I mean, he's a big influence. Uh, I'll say that's one of my favorite coaches ever in my life. Like, he's a, he's a great coach. I know he, um, we went through a lot. I feel like he, he, you know, he helped me through when I was – he helped me when I was down and at my happiest moment. So, I say uh, Coach Petra, he helped me with uh, being a student at a game learning different fronts and coverages, uh, life really. So not just football, he helped me off the field too. So uh, he, that's a great person and a great coach. What's it like seeing the fact that he's now with the Bears and also with one of your former teammates? Yeah, I mean, it's a blessing. Um, uh, you know, that was his goal um, to, to be an NFL coach. So, and he, uh, he really achieved it. So I'm, I'm proud of him. He's a great coach. It just heads up. We're going to have time for a few more questions for Jamar. Uh, Andrew, next up. Yeah, to, to follow up on, on Coach Petrie, you know, it's, it's him, it's Nall, it's AP that are all uh, with Chicago now. What, what have AP and, and Coach Petrie just told you about the, the difference in NFL locker rooms, in NFL practices and games, and, and what you need to do to get to that next level? Uh, man, I talk to – I keep in contact with AP a lot, Artavis Pierce a lot. And then you really tell me um, – uh, the game is a lot faster. Uh, you got to be mentally tough. Uh, and I say that's really it. Obviously, guys are bigger, but the game is a lot faster. And you got to be mental, mentally tough and know that everybody's, everybody's fighting for a job. Okay, Alex Fleming. How you doing, sir? Alex Fleming, Florida Sun. Um, there's only 32 NFL positions that play running back, and only half of them play full time. Are you a feature back? Uh, I feel like, yeah, I can be a full-time running back if I land on the right team. I definitely, if, uh, if I land on the right team um, where I can showcase my skills, um, I think that would be a good fit. Also, one last question. Your hand technique and your footwork, do you think that separates you from the rest of the running backs available in this draft? Um, definitely, uh, definitely wide zone footwork, uh, open field footwork, and uh, my catching ability. I think that separates me a lot from uh, the most. Okay, Nick, last question for Jamar. 
Hey, Jamar, Nick Faribault again. You know, you mentioned you improved in pass protection uh, from your freshman year to where you are now. Yeah. What traits specifically did you work on in pass pro to really advance your ability in that area? Um, I'll say pass protection, identification. You know, coming from high school and being uh, being a freshman, coming from high school, we didn't really, you know, it was just, you know, blitz. If somebody blitz, come get him. Like I didn't really know about too many coverages, and when I got here, it was it was something really different. It was just a lot. So, I I just I decided to spend a lot of time with uh, Coach Petrie, and uh, we spent a lot of time after practice, before practice, on days we're off, uh, just trying to get pass protection down and knowing our identification and knowing a blocking technique. Um, what started to help me, I say, after practice, I start um, going to the bags and working on my technique, and you know. Uh, uh, having a couple players do some like different blitzes where I can, you know, get my eyes right, you know, work on my eyes. So definitely yeah, that's something I improved on throughout my years here. Thanks, Jamar. Thank you, Jamar. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Uh, go right ahead. Hey, Nishan, how are we doing today? Doing good in yourself. I'm doing well, thank you. Just want to ask you, throughout the process, the leading up to the, the pro day and the pre-draft process, has there been anyone that you've kind of leaned on for advice, whether it be former teammates have gone through it, current players in the NFL that you've kind of used to pick their brain on what to expect? Uh, really, um, Coach Blue. Uh, we had numerous phone calls. We just talked ball. And then, um, of course, um, my coach where I was training at, Coach Milliner, um, he's, he's been in this game for a while. So I leaned on him. And then just the guys that I train with, um, I train with a bunch of guys, uh, J.C. Horn, Javon Holland, a bunch of guys with um, a lot of potential. So um, I leaned on really anybody that I could. During, this pre -draft, during the pre-draft process, have you had any communication with the Buccaneers? Yes, I spoke with them once. Was it a position coach or just a scout? No, it was a scout. Perfect. Good luck on your journey. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, next up, Mateus. Uh, Mateus Arnelas from Time Out here in Brazil. Uh, congratulations for going for the NFL draft. Thank you. Uh, before you got in Oregon State, you have a, a, a exper a experience in JUCO. And how do you think that being that kind of situation and then being in Oregon State, how do you think that all that kind of talk about your game and your, like, uh, uh, I, I don't want to mix both, but you're like, you want to be in the next level. So how do you think that all, all that you have done show that? Um, I think being in JUCO um, is kind of what really molded me into what I am now. Um, just because it, it took a lot um, getting to school by yourself. Um, for me, I had an hour commute. So, um, and then doing school and everything is optional. Like, there's no one telling you you have to go to school or you have to go to practice. So um, just being in Juco, I think, molded me and just um, made me realize that this is really what I wanted to do. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, next up, we have Alex Fleming. How you doing, sir? Alex Fleming, Florida Sun. How's it going? Pretty good. You displayed a lot of speed which makes me wonder, have you ever played on the East Coast? Have I ever played on the East Coast? Yes. Um, I played in Florida maybe twice. Yeah, twice in Pop Warner. But I'm How from do you the, Go ahead. Sorry, sir. I'm from the West Coast. So not, I haven't really been on the East Coast too much. How do you feel about the Jacksonville Jaguars? Um, I mean, they're, um, obviously, they're in a the building situation. Um, which would be great to be a part of. Uh, uh, but right now, I'm a fan of all 32 teams. So whoever come get me, we'll get a, a good player. Okay, next up, Nick Daschle. Yeah, Nishan, when, uh, when did you know during this last season that you were ready to come out and try the draft? Um, maybe... Maybe my last game uh, against Stanford, I kind of have been putting the pieces together throughout the season, uh, meeting and talking with people. And um, 
after Stanford, me and my family kind of came to a decision that this was the best option for me. Um, so yeah, probably like that last game for me, which was Stanford. Okay, next we have Andrew Hobner. Hey, Sean, Andrew Hobner from uh, KZI down in Eugene. Um, you know, just looking at the influence uh, Blues seem to have had on all you guys over the last couple of years, I mean, it seems like he resonates with the DBs in a way that, you know, past coaches might have not. What What's the biggest thing that, you know, he's influenced you on through this process? And what's been his advice being a guy who's been uh, in the NFL circles for a while and spent some time up at that level? Um, I think his biggest thing um... – was like accountability and responsibility. Um, and he kind of put that that NFL type of like the way they the way they operate, like we have to be 15 to 10 minutes early before meetings and um, everything we did was full go. So um, he's kind of just prepped us for this moment. Um, and then Blue's a, a great guy outside of being a coach. Um, for me, he's kind of like a father figure, so. Just as a quick follow-up to that, what is the biggest thing that he's told you that you might not have expected would happen or the NFL would be like, but he said, hey, you know, if you get up to that level, this is something you need to need to know that they do up there. Um, be on special teams. Uh, I think special, uh, special teams is going to keep you in the league um, until you're obviously starting or whatnot, but playing special teams is kind of what he's harped. Okay, and our last question from Nick. Hey, and Sean, Nick Farabaugh, Pittsburgh Sports Now. You know, you just talked about special teams. How comfortable do you feel being a gunner, uh, doing pretty much any type of job on special teams? How comfortable do you feel you can contribute from day one on special teams? I mean, I'm willing to do anything on special teams. I mean, when I was here my first year, um, Coach Cook has kind of put that on me. Like, I, I mean, I did every special teams, but field goal and uh, – yeah, but Phil go did every special team. Just to follow up to that, um, on the field, actually on the field as a corner, from 2019 to 2020, you took a dramatic leap up to in the technical side of your game. What mm -hmm. really did you improve from 2019 to 2020 that made you a more complete player? Um, I think the mental part of the game. Um, I think being, being able to go into the game and being able to slow it down uh, made it a lot easier for me. It allowed me to play faster. And then obviously like the technique part, just cleaning up my feet, um, my hand placement, which is still, I still, I still have to work on that, but um, just all the little things. All right, Nishan, thank you. Thank you. Uh, go right ahead. Hi, Jay, how are we doing today? Pretty good, how about yourself? I'm doing well, thanks for asking. I just wanna ask, Throughout this process, I know you had your teammate there to kind of go through it with, but has there been any former players or current players that you've kind of used to pick their brain on what to expect for the pro day, uh, the pre-draft, and, and leading up to the draft? Uh, yeah, um, you know, I've talked to Xavier Crawford. I've talked to Isaiah Hodgins, which is a family friend of mine. Um, and um, I talked to, you know, Jalen Moore. I've talked to Sean Wilson. I talked to all those guys. You know, they're all just curious, you know, about the process and how it was going for me. And I asked them questions as well. And I also was able to give some feedback to the younger guys here who will be doing this someday. And, you know, the biggest thing that Isaiah told me was, um, you know, one drill doesn't make or break you in terms of the position work. So, yeah, I just went out there, you know, head down, quiet, and just, you know, tried to do my best today. Awesome. And throughout the process, have you had any conversations with the Buccaneers yet? Uh, yes, I have. Um, I had a Zoom oh. call with them. Uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, I had a Zoom call with them uh, early uh, this uh, this in March. Um, was and, it with a scout or a positional coach? It was a scout. I haven't talked awesome. to any position. I haven't talked to any position coaches. <clears throat> awesome. Best of luck on your journey and uh, congratulations on the process. I appreciate it. Okay, next up, Mateus. Isaiah, Mateus Ornelas from Time Out here in Brazil. Uh, congratulations for going for the NFL draft. Uh, one, one of the qualities that a lot of scouts see in you is how aggressive you are, how you're like a guy who will not miss too many tackles and, and be there for making the play. Do you think that's your main quality that you're bringing for the NFL or you think you have much uh, more stuff that you can show? 
I definitely have more stuff that I can show. I feel like you get better um, each and everywhere, each, each and every year, you know, you put on a helmet and pads, um, you know, every day is a work day, you know, even if you're not going to practice every day, how you carry yourself throughout the day is a work day to get better. And um, I definitely say that that's definitely one of the qualities I bring to a team. And just a quick follow up. How do you think that the, the pro day was big for you guys because you don't have the combine and you have the other problems during the 2020 season? I'm sorry, say that again. I'm sorry. Uh, how big is the pro day for you? Because this year we don't have the combine and 2020 was a really different season for all the players. Um, you know, it, it was big. Um, But I would say, you know, I mean, obviously I wasn't a combine invite, but had I been a combine invite, I would have hoped that it was a combine instead of, and, you know, so we can do both. But I mean, it was definitely huge. I mean, I think it worked to, um, it worked to a lot of, it was, it was a lot of benefits for sure. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. And next up, uh, Alex Fleming. <clears throat> Mr. Dunn, Alex Fleming, Florida Sun. How are you doing today, sir? Pretty good. How about yourself? Pretty good. You're aggressive. You are fearless on that field. What exactly made you this way? And what was your typical motivation every time you step on that field that you're going to be the best that you can be? Um, my motivation was just, you know, <clears throat> playing for the for the people next to me. Um, the guys in my room, for sure. Um, off the top of uh, off top. Um, it's just I, I'm always thinking about the guys in my room um, and then, you know, my teammates as well. Um, And then, you know, just not disappointing anybody, you know, family, coaches, um, fans watching. Um, and, you know, I have a name on the back of my jersey. You know, I don't want to embarrass myself or embarrass anybody that's been that's watching me play the game. And um, I'm sorry, you had a second part to that question. And I forgot. Yes. Other than your motivation, what drives you to be the best? But you mentioned that, that you got the back name on the back of your jersey. Mm -hmm. um, what's a team going to get if they draft you? They're going to get a hard nose hard working, loves football, um, and he's going to come out and loves to compete and going to come out and uh, try to take a job as a starter or a major contribu contributor in my first year. Good luck to you. Thank you. Okay, next up, Nick Daschle. Yeah, Isaiah, when you were trying to decide uh, what you had a year, you could have come back for another year. How easy was the decision to, to decide to come out? Did you feel like there's anything more you could accomplish in college? Um, it was it was a tough decision, um, but my decision was ultimately made um, the offseason going into my senior year. Um, I mean, it was it was and then it kind of got it kind of got a little uh, I kind of hesitated a little bit because, you know, there was talk about us not having a season. So that kind of, you know, that made me mad in the beginning. And then we ended up having a season. Um, so, yeah, my, my mind was pretty much made. And then you I, I think I saw where you had uh, I think it was a four, three, nine. 40 today was that about what you want about what you wanted do you think you could go much faster than that oh that's that's exactly what i wanted something in the four threes um i was i was really hoping for pushing for that today okay next up andrew hobner hey isaiah andrew hobner from uh, down in eugene uh, with kzi some of the guys that you mentioned earlier you know whether that's jalen moore and, and zay and some of these other guys it's kind of a variety of dudes that are either still in the league or were in there for a second um, what is that kind of, I guess, diversity of opinion given you just, um, you know, for what this process is and, and what it ultimately is going to take to get into the league and to stay there? Um, the, the, the greatest thing about this process and talking to those guys is because each and every one of them had a, had, were in different situations. So I got to, I got to hear different situations, you know, and I got to, you know, think to myself, the, you know, the person, the man I am. How would I, how am I going to react if I am put in one of their situations? You know, you know, like I said, being my own man, I'm not going to be in the same, the same situation per se as these other guys. So, you know, uh, the, it was huge for me to hear how things get into, uh, you know, hearing how they went through their process, you know, Jalen and um, Sean, and then obviously hearing from Isaiah and how he's, how he's taking it, you know, being on a team and then, you know, talking to an older guy like Xavier, who's been there for, for a few years now. So it was huge. Helpful. And just, just as a quick follow-up to that, what what's Coach Blue kind of giving you as, as far as advice has gone and and any you know tips of the trade, ha him having been in the NFL for a while? Um just just uh being huge on special teams. Gotta be good on special teams. You gotta make the team that way. 
Okay, next up, Nick Fairbaugh. Yeah, as a Nick Fairbaugh, Pittsburgh Sports Now. You moved into the nickel a bit more this season than you had uh, previously, at least. How has that transition gone for you? You know, is it, is it, and what do you think that transition to the nickel a bit more, at least, has really helped your draft stock and show off versatility? Um, it definitely helped me um, know more about the defense. Um, I know I knew more. Um, I knew I just knew more about defense and people's responsibility. I knew where I had to, I had a huge I had a way bigger role on the defense at the nickel position. You got to do a lot of you got to do a lot of things, you know, than just being out outside that corner. Um, and it felt good that I was, you know, I feel like I was more a part of the defense as well that way, because, you know, there's there's literally plays for a nickel to make. And, you know, you, your brother is counting on you to make the play and, you know, you don't want to leave them out to dry. Um, I also think that um, it also taught me, you know, a little bit of adversity as well, you know, because I never played nickel until literally, you know, I didn't get reps in fall camp leading up to the season. And then, you know, I just got I got reps probably like the last two practices. And then, you know, I was told to, you know, go in there and play play the first game. And the second game, I had full nickel responsibilities. So it taught me that, you know, in the NFL, because I know this happens, you you could be playing one position the next week and they tell you, hey, look, you know, we want you to do this. So I, I definitely think it helped me. How comfortable in that nickel spot do you feel as a blitzer? Because I do know that's the thing that's growing and growing more in the NFL now. Uh, as a blitzer, do you feel comfortable really playing and run support like that? Especially with your mean streak, it does fit in well. And also, have you met with the Steelers at all? Um, I have not met with the Steelers, um, but I definitely feel uh, comfortable blitzing. Um, you know, they don't know when you're coming, you know, um, depending on how good of a job you do disguising. And, you know, that's the best is when nobody knows you're about to smack them. So, you know. <clears throat> okay, John Shearer. Hey, John Shearer here from Sideline Sports. How are you doing today? Pretty good. How about yourself? Doing pretty well. So uh, a question that I have for you is, how do you think you're going to handle um, when an opposing wide receiver uh, talks trash to you? Uh, whenever they try to get under your skin, how do you think you're going to handle OBJ and, and players like that that, that are going to talk? Do you think you'll be disciplined or do you think uh, you'll kind of give in? What are your thoughts on that? Thank you. Um, uh, I think, you know, I mean, I, I talk my, 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 my good amount of trash as well. Um, I won't overdo it. I'm not too much of a talker. You know, I think it's actually funny when people do that. Um, but, you know, I'll talk, I'll definitely, I would talk a little bit back. You know, I wouldn't let it get in my head and throw me off. So, you know, not too much jibber, uh, jibber, jabber back and forth, you know, just say one thing two maybe two and, you know, just continue to play my game. All right. Our last question for Isaiah is Andrew Hobner. Yeah, Isaiah, you you had gone through a you know coaching change when you were here and, and scheme change as well on the defensive end. You know, having played in, in a couple different systems over your years at Oregon State at this point. I mean, do you feel relatively comfortable when when you're hitting the board and and if you know you're getting quizzed on any of these things, whether it be from scouts or others, about you know what do you see on this play or what do you see in in this scheme or formation? Yeah, um, actually, that just you know that that. Uh that grew a lot. Um, I, I actually grew to love that a lot more this past season. Cause like I said, I played nickel and I had to watch a lot more and, and know a lot more. Um, and I feel really comfortable. Yeah. Doing, um, doing those things, you know, um, in a way it's a time for me to show something, you know, besides my athletic ability, show how smart I am. 